In this video, you'll learn how to classify insects according to body types, number of legs, and types of wings. You can then take your field journal out into the field to discover and identify the various insects around you as you observe their behavior and develop a theory about why they behave the way they do. Begin by opening up your journals to a new blank page and title it Taxonomy of Insects. We will now write down the first part of each and every field journal entry. The date, time, weather, location, and purpose. All insects are part of the animal kingdom, which is further divided into phyla. Insects are in the phyla Arthropoda, and their class is Hexapoda. Arthropoda means segmented body parts, and Hexapoda means to have six legs. Now, let's clear up some common confusion. Our garden snails insects. They are a part of the phylum mollusk, like octopus and squid. Therefore, they are not true insects. Now let's take a look at what the characteristics for hexapoda are. First of all, their bodies are divided into three parts. This is what it means to be arthropoda. They have a head, thorax, and abdomen. The head has one pair of antenna, one pair of compound eyes, and a large variety in types of mouth parts, such as biting, sucking, stinging, licking, and etc. The thorax is where the six legs are. The thorax is further divided into three parts and is where the wings are located. The abdomen is where the genital opening is. Insects have no legs or wings on their abdomen. The class Hexapoda is further divided into subclasses based upon whether the insect has wings or not. Ateragoda do not have wings. They are a very primitive insect that developed long before winged insects. These insects are ametabolists, meaning they have very little or no metamorphosis. The juveniles look identical to the adults throughout development. The second subclass of Hexapoda is Pteragata, meaning winged insects. This group contains the vast majority of insects we are most familiar with, such as butterflies, ants, and bees. This subclass is separated into two groups, based upon whether they have full metamorphosis or partial metamorphosis. Exoterigoda are insects with a simple metamorphosis and without any intermediary pupil stage. Endoterigoda undergo complete metamorphosis, complete with a pupil stage, like butterflies, wasps, and ants. There are 30 different orders of insects. However, in the field journaling activity that follows, we will only be focusing on the four most common. These four are all from Endoterigoda, meaning they are all winged insects that undergo complete metamorphosis. The four most common orders are Coleoptera, which means sheathed wings, including insects such as beetles. Lepidoptera, which means scaled wings, such as butterflies and moths. Diptera, meaning they only have one set of wings, like flies and mosquitoes. Hymenoptera, which means they have two set of wings and are joined together like wasps, bees, and ants. Now let's set up our data table to organize the information we collect during our field research activity. Draw four columns and title them Name Sketch, Description, Order, and Quantity. Okay, good. Here's what a simple entry will look like. When you discover an insect in the field, first begin to draw its most noticeable and distinct qualities. If you know its name, you can write it underneath the sketch. Next, write the descriptions of what it looks like and how it behaves. Try to figure out what its order is, and keep track of each single individual you discover. We are now ready to enter the field. In session one, just notice what types of insects you have in your surroundings, and get used to learning how to classify them. Fill in the data table with at least four different insects and choose one in particular to study in greater depth during session two. 
In session 2, you will be returning to the field and observing your chosen insect again. Record your findings with a new entry in your field journal. Begin looking for a behavior pattern you can become curious about and develop a theory on. In session 3, you will again return to the field to develop your hypothesis, which is an educated guess, about why you think the insects are behaving the way you are observing them. The hypothesis you develop should be testable without injuring any of the insects. In session 4, you will test your hypothesis to see if it can be proven to actually play out in the real world. If it does, congratulations, you can write your theory. If it does not, go back and work on modifying your hypothesis with the new data you've observed in the field. Please remember to like and share this video. If you enjoyed this, please click on the links below to visit our Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn pages so you can learn and experience more great field science activities. This was brought to you by Mountain and Sea Educational Adventures, which runs outdoor education youth programs on Catalina Island and around the Southern California area. Please visit our website at www.mountainandsea.org.